Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline via Zoom is ESPN College Football Analyst, one of the best to ever wear number 50 at BYU, and an analyst for the Washington football team, Trevor Maddich. Trevor, welcome. The Washington football team. Um, are you going to get used to saying that? Well, as soon as they start playing better football, I'll <laughs> be used to saying that. Although I, they were three and thirteen last year, I think they'll be a lot better this year. Yeah, it's 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 big changes, and I think guys that it was the right thing to do, but it still uh, is kind of sad in a lot of ways because most fans and and really the players that played there, most of them, myself included, have always associated their former name, the Washington Redskins with greatness that was the only emotional association that we had with that word and they were some of my heroes i mean even as a young man playing football i would watch monday night football and see art monk score a touchdown and i would see charles mann take down the quarterback and joe theisman throw a terrific pass out I, I would see these things and think these are the guys that i want to model my career after and the first time i ever played at washington as a player was as a member of the Indianapolis Colts. And I went out early for a pregame warm-up. I stood in the end zone where I saw that, that name Redskins in that amazing font in the end zone at RFK Stadium. And I stood there for a moment and just respected what had been to me such an important organization because I associated them with championships. That's all I knew. Then I went out and I disrespected them uh, on the field for the next three hours. But, <laughs> but I also understand that for many of our neighbors, that word is like being stabbed in the ear with an ice pick. It truly has an ugly history. And so I think the change was the right thing to do. And we certainly look forward to what we hope will be an NFL season, a college football season. So let's dive in tons to discuss with you. Uh, BYU and Alabama uh, reportedly could be a week one game. Uh, we discussed in the opening segment what's trending, the benefits of that for BYU. What do you think BYU has to gain in a potential matchup with Alabama? Uh, they have a chance to get instant credibility. I mean, it's phenomenal. Alabama is a national championship contender in this season. And even if it weren't for COVID and all the changes in the system, Bama would be right there at the end competing for it all. And so this is an opportunity for BYU to really measure themselves against the best of the best. And I think getting them in the opener, should it happen, is also good for BYU because they're returning a starting quarterback in Zach Wilson. They're returning a lot of continuity. Alabama has continuity of organization and system, but they'll have a new starting quarterback. They lost a couple of wide receivers to the NFL, although they bring a couple of them back, Jalen Waddell and Don, uh, Devontae Smith and others that are phenomenal. But BYU has a chance to come in cohesive and ready to give it their best shot. And I think that this is a tremendous opportunity for the Cougars to demonstrate to the college football world what they can do. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're still on that hypothetical area of BYU and Alabama actually playing because everything is fluid. But if that game happens, which side has more to gain, BYU or Alabama? BYU tremendously has more to gain. If they play well then and, and don't win, it still puts them on the map and it still will make recruits look at them and say, wow, BYU is really on the rise. If they win the game, which is not out of the question. I mean, Alabama clearly has been stacking up five-star and four-star recruits for many years. I mean, in every way, they'll have the advantage from that standpoint. But if BYU is able to win it, then all of a sudden, people are talking about the Cougars in a different way. And keep in mind that a couple of years ago, when they went to Wisconsin, that was a top-10 team. Most people didn't give BYU a chance to win it, but they did. They hit Wisconsin in the mouth, and they beat them at their own game, which is to say BYU was more physical than Wisconsin. They went out and beat Tennessee, and they were more physical than Tennessee, especially as the game went on and they got into uh, overtime. And then a few years before that, they went out to Jerry World in Dallas, and they beat the mighty Oklahoma Sooners at their own game. Those clean-cut, church-going, married return missionaries and their teammates hit the Sooners in the mouth and beat them in a physical football game. Now, I'm not saying they're going to do that to Alabama, but what I'm saying is that BYU has faced top 10 opponents in these kinds of games in the past, and they have shown very well. And this is a great opportunity 
for Zach Wilson and company to come in and execute. But that's what they'll have to do. To have a chance to show well, they will need to be the team that executes better. And when you face a team like this, very often as an individual player, you can freak out if you're not used to it. But what you need to understand is that you need to trust your technique, trust the play, and take your sets correctly as an offensive lineman, put your hands in the right place as a defensive lineman, have your leverage correct, run the right routes, don't try to do anything extra. Do what you've been coached to do, and that gives you a chance. I'm at this point with college football, Trevor, uh, especially based on Major League Baseball and what's happened the last couple of days with multiple games postponed, the Marlins having a rash of positive tests of COVID-19. To me, it feels like there are going to be weeks that just straight up get canceled because BYU or its opponent has too many positive tests and we just don't play. I feel like if we get four to six games in, that's probably going to be something is better than nothing. How do you feel about where we're headed in terms of how many games one will be scheduled at all and then two, how many will actually play? Yeah, I I agree with that. I think the season will go in, in fits and starts because of that. And we've seen that in the first weekend of Major League Baseball, for goodness sake. I mean, the the Florida Marlins went up and played their series in Philadelphia, and all of a sudden, 13 players and coaches ended up testing positive, and they couldn't even go home. They had to quarantine in Pennsylvania. And then the Yankees uh, had to postpone a game. The Phillies had to postpone a game. There's this all this big fallout among teams that were planning to play next. And that's in the opening week of, of baseball, for goodness sake. And so I expect the same kind of thing to happen to football. And I think it's important for conferences and administrators to think outside the box. I mean, this game against Alabama may happen. It may not. But the only reason it's a discussion is because the Pac-12 went to a conference-only schedule and Alabama was scheduled to play USC in this opener. So Alabama was looking for somebody else. The thing about the SEC is that they may go, we don't know this yet, but they may go to a conference plus one schedule The reason for that is that so many SEC teams have their big rival at the end of the season as a non-conference schedule. I mean, South Carolina plays Clemson. Georgia plays Georgia Tech, right? So there's there's a whole lot of non-conference going on, and Alabama doesn't have that. So this might be their plus one. Well, if a team needs to schedule somebody at the last minute because of COVID, because an opponent has to drop out, then other teams, I think, will be ready to jump in. It'll wreak havoc with game planning. But I think that you'll see games occur that are not currently on the schedule as long as people can think outside the box. Trevor, an Alabama radio personality, his name is Stephen M. Smith, was talking about BYU football yesterday and the potential of Alabama taking on the Cougars to open the season. He compared BYU to a filet of fish at McDonald's uh, rather than the premium chicken that would be USC if you were to seek that meal at McDonald's. <laughs> now, uh, it's, that's up for debate, McDonald's in general. But what do you think of BYU being compared to a filet of fish? Don't you love filet of fish? <laughs> filet of fish is awesome. You just want another burger? Is that all you want, really? <laughs> I want some hot yeah. chicken in Nashville. Yeah, well, you know, it's really funny that that the the local radio folks in Alabama are, are desperate enough to talk trash to BYU. They're desperate, meaning not not desperate for a win, but desperate for something sports to talk about instead of talking about whether or not there will be sports. I actually kind of like it. I think it's fun. It would be easy to see that as an insult, but I don't at all. I think that's that's a guy having fun, talking trash, and everybody will have a chance to prove it when they get to the field. That's one thing that I think that that sports people are good at, and that's good-naturedly talking trash about an upcoming opponent and have it not be personal, and I'm fine with it. That's fine. Yeah, what's but it, Steven? here's the thing. If, if, well, if Alabama, or excuse me, if BYU wins this game, though, or if BYU plays well, in other words, if they don't play like filet of fish if they play like a premium chicken sandwich, then I expect BYU fans to inundate that radio station with filet of fish sandwiches for that guy to enjoy. <laughs> Maybe eat 100 of them on camera. Not Stephen A. Smith. Stephen M. Smith. <laughs> M. Smith. Yeah. Uh, Fred Warner named number 70 in the NFL's top 100. Uh, pretty awesome for Fred, who a lot of people think uh, is underrated. Um, this guy was a middle uh, linebacker in the NFL. He was an outside here. He's made a name for himself. What do you think of number 70 for the spot of Fred Warner? You know, he represents BYU so well. You know, on the field, 
I figured that he would do really well because he's got the physical abilities. I mean, he's got the ability to slither through gaps and, and beat blocks when it seems like he's blocked, but all of a sudden he goes by it. But more than anything else, he's really smart. He is a step faster than most people, not because he runs faster, but because he anticipates better. He understands what's happening more quickly than other people will. So his diagnostic is really fast. And because of that, he gets there fast and he's disruptive. A smart football player like that is always going to look good. And I'll tell you what, it's really good for BYU to see their guys and their guys do well in the NFL for the right reasons. And I'll tell you, Fred Warner, this is what he did when he played in Provo. And I, I love to watch him play. It would have been nice to have seen him get that Super Bowl championship. But Andy Reid, Andy Reid needed it. Mm. Fred will have his chances. There was this really fun moment at a basketball game this year. Well, fun for Daniel Sorensen, not as fun for Fred. But Fred, uh, it, it was Gonzaga game, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Fred Warner was there, and and they he stood up and, and waved to the crowd. And then they showed Daniel Sorensen, and he stood up, and it was like, Super Bowl champion! It was like, oh, he won, but he didn't. Oh, shoot. But BYU fans love them both. But that was a fun moment. I know. It's great. It's great. That's part of the fun of the trash talk. And I'm sure Sorensen will have a few things to say to Fred next time. That's fun. Uh, Trevor, your Washington football team is going to get a good look at Fred Warner on December 13th when the 49ers take on Washington. Uh, Taysom Hill and the Saints not on Washington's schedule this year, but Taysom Hill nonetheless is uh, what feels like an everyday NFL topic just because he is so unique. That said, he was ranked the 15th best Saint, and he was given a 64 rating on Madden football. What do you think of Taysom Hill getting those low ratings from uh, the number one selling video game franchise and being placed as the 15th best saint. I'm, I'm listen. I, I thought you were going to say the high ratings. I thought that was actually pretty cool. He hasn't had much of a chance to show what he can do as a starting quarterback there, but all the other things that he does covering kicks on special teams, going in on short yardage and goal line and making plays, all those things are unique. He can do so many things extremely well. He's a, a game planning nightmare. For opponents, it's one of the reasons they use him like they do. But the thing that stands out to me about Taysom Hill is that his childlike joy for the game comes out in the way he plays and the way he acts when he's not playing. I mean, that's one of the reasons why when he's in the game and makes up a play, the camera will go right to his face because it's not just, okay, I'm happy I did that. It is so purely and genuinely joyful. And I, I love that about his game. I, I think he's going to have a chance to be a starting quarterback at some point as well, and I think he'll do well. But in the meantime, what he's doing now is calling great attention to his football character. And again, he's reflecting good on the Cougars because it's not, it's not just a good guy. That guy's an outstanding football player, not just quarterback, football player. Trevor, next time you're in Provo, I just want you to know a filet of fish meal is on me or a premium chicken sandwich, whatever you choose. You know what? Give me the filet of fish. That is now my favorite <laughs> meal. You got it, man. Great to talk to you. Always great insight. We appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. Trevor Maddich on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Trevor,